we've actually promulgated a new regulation uh, which was signed off by the minister in November 2022. The application of the 2022 regulation was published on the 31st of January 2023, as it is now, when the, the 2022 regulations was promulgated, the 2001 was repealed and it is no longer applicable. On the 2022 regulations, we've made a lot of improvement, wherein the scope of application for the regulation says it applies to major hazard installations, it applies to the prescribed quantities as captured on Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 of Annex J, as well as major hazard pipelines. Meaning that all the major hazard installations that were classified in the 2001 regulations will still be regulated or controlled under the 2022 regulations unless there is a cause or an exit strategy which is going to be a report that is compiled by an approved inspection authority indicating if that particular installation does not have harm to public. So if there is that potential for public to still be harmed, even if, even if the prescribed quantities are below the threshold, such installations are still going to be regulated within the new 2022 regulations. In the 2022 regulations, the prescribed quantity are actually divided in terms of uh, three classes. So we're going to have three classes of different installation. Class one, which are going to be the lowest prescribed quantity, will have the medium as well as the high hazard quantities. And all those three classes are going to be uh, regulated differently and this is an improvement from the old regulations because the old regulation used a blanket requirements where everybody was expected to do the same thing. So in the new regulation, those with lower quantities are given less requirements as opposed to the medium and the high hazard establishment. For example, now, the low hazard establishment are only expected to conduct a risk assessment, have an emergency plan in place, and making sure that that emergency plan is tested on annual basis. Whereas the medium and the high have got much more robust regulations and requirements, wherein they are expected as well to implement process safety management systems and put together a major incident prevention policy. Going into the high hazard establishment, they are also expected to put together a safety report wherein they are going to detail how they are going to be implementing the major incident prevention policies and ensuring that the principle of process safety management are implemented, are maintained, and the establishment is kept in a good working condition. So the implementation of all these regulations are different. We have transition periods that applies to the low hazard and medium hazard as well as high hazard establishment. But in terms of the transition and the implementation process, there are going to be three phases, which is going to um, be over a three-year period, wherein we require that at the end of the first year, which is going to be 31 of January 2024, all installation must have conducted a risk assessment as well as having an emergency plan in line with the SANS 15 
14, which is the standard for putting together an emergency preparedness plan for each and every individual major hazard installation. Phase two is going to escalate and concentrate specifically on notification, meaning that all the major hazard installation within the borders of South Africa should have notified as well as registering with the Department of Employment and Labor. Counter to that, the medium hazard installations as well as the high hazard installations are expected to have put together a major incident prevention policy. And the third phase will basically concentrate on the high hazard establishments as well as the pipelines, wherein they will build up on phase one, phase two, and ensure that they have put in place a safety report as well as license to operate. So we are going to need all the high hazard establishments as well as the pipelines to get a license to operate from the Department of Employment and Labor. If I can recap back in terms of the notifications, which is improvised, what we have done is that all the newly erected establishments which became major hazard installation after the promulgation of the 2022 regulations are expected to comply to all the requirements and all those phases that I've indicated will not apply to them. So they should notify the department with a prescribed form. We call it a form A that is also at the annex, just the end back of the regulations where it indicates exactly the information that is required as well as the supporting documentation that needs to form a package for notification. And there's also a payable fee that is expected and those payable fee at the moment are also in the annexures and they will be revised from time to time whenever the chief inspector feels fit to revise those payments. After the payment has been done, the notification or the application will be evaluated for compliance and if all the boxes are ticked, that installation will be registered and it shall be issued with a registration certificate which is expected to be displayed at the installation so that visitors as well as public may be told in advance of the status of that particular major hazard installation. Having said that, the is also a requirement which is very much important in terms of consultation. So around the workplace or the measure hazard installation, there should be a communication of some sort where in the installation consult with the neighbors as well as the public coming forth and declaring and also indicating the type of incidences that they can cause and allowing the public or the neighbors or the affected parties to come and look at their risk assessment report as well as just um, alerting or just discussing the emergency protocols in a case where loss of containment is um, seen. The other thing that is to be done, especially on the notification as well, is that the installations need to advertise that installation in a local newspaper that is in English or a local language and that process has to be repeated every five years when there is a renewal 
of risk assessment or whenever there are changes in the installation that can affect the risk profile, whenever they can be an incident of a significant value or an incident that activates the emergency plan or a major hazard installation. So in a layman's term, the major hazard installations are actually those installations that store dangerous substances or chemicals that have got potential to cause harm and those chemicals can cause fire they can be released into the environment and are toxic to human beings they can explode and they can also cause an environmental disaster so all these chemicals or all these installations need to have robust safety measures in place and they also have to put an emergency plan together where in the emergency plan is approved or signed off or agreed upon by the relevant local authority in the space that they are operating. Reason being that the local government is a competent body to deal with emergencies and they are the first responders in a case of an emergency. As you've seen in the previous year, we suffered an incident on a road, Boxback Road, where the consignment was a major hazard installation, but because it was in transit, it could not be investigated under the department. So if uh, facts had been turned around where that installation was, a permanent installation, it could have been investigated under the department. Nevertheless, these installations are installations that are very dangerous and not only do they affect the employees, but they've got a potential to affect the public and in a bad way. So as a summary, major hazard installation incidences or major incidences are incidences that affect public as well. So those are incidences that originate from a workplace and they escalate outside of the workplace and they have a potential to cause the most harsh consequences. So people die, people suffer long-term um, ailments and some of the people do become um, disabled or incapacitated. Hence, we are very strict when it comes to the regulations as well as the control or management of major hazard installations. We want to make sure that all these major hazard installations, designs, installations that have got safety in mind and they are built for safety to contain those dangerous substances and keep those substances in the installations. So we do not promote or want to see the release of these dangerous substances. So the installation themselves need to ensure that the substances are kept within the installation and in a case where they can be a potential of a release. The engineering controls must kick in and there are also passive measures that can also be used which are basically under emergency preparedness plan. People have to be removed and be placed at um, safe locations where they can assemble and be accounted and those who are still missing can then be recovered and if there is a need for emergency or medical attention because the first thing that happens is that the emergency services must be on call and they should respond so they would ordinarily be at the site of scene or of incident and respond or attend to those people who have been overpowered 
or affected by those chemicals. It can be fire, it can be toxic releases, or it can be those chemicals that are asphyxiant, or it can be radiation, heat, or explosion. So depending on a substance, its character and its nature, and the damage that it can cause, the emergency services will respond in line with the requirements. The regulations as well, on regulation number 15, which is emergency plan, requires that after the plan has been put in place, there should be a mock drill so that that plan can be tested if it will definitely work in a case of a real incident. So we make sure that all the installations are ready for any disaster that is associated to their installation. And in a case of such unforeseen incident or unforeseen circumstances, they are able to respond and they are able to offer the utmost first respond help to save lives because as you have seen with the box bag incident a lot of people lost life we've got a tendency to move towards danger instead of moving backwards and taking cover because we do not know how that particular installation can respond so some installation will definitely affect those people that are around depending on the radius as calculated or advised by the approved inspection authority. An installation in terms of regulation 10, I've spoken about this earlier on to say there should be a report from an approved inspection authority. So if an MHI site has passed all the criteria for classification in terms of 2022 requirements. They should now approach an approved inspection authority in line of measure hazard installation or approved to operate within measure hazard installation. We do have a list and that list is available as well on the departmental website. And the approved inspection authority will do a simulation. They will check how far the incident can go, what damage it can cause, and as well as advising the uh, necessary emergency protocols that has to be in place. One other thing that I would like to make um, known or pronounce is that we are also in a journey to ensure that we collaborate, we align with other government departments such as Department of Transport because they are responsible to make sure that dangerous goods consignments which at a point of arrival and at a point of a release they are major hazard installation. So we've aligned all our requirements to make sure that they do not clash with Department of Transport. We are also in collaboration with National um, Energy Regulator of South Africa. We are in talks and we are working closely with railway safety regulators to ensure that we are not contradicting one another, but we are talking the same language and all these installations will not be confused. And there are also other um, forums that the Department of Employment and Labor has embarked on, especially after the incident that happened in Beirut, where ammonium nitrate fertilizers exploded. So we made sure that we collaborate with other government departments and the forum there is championed as well by the Department of Transport 
they are fertilizer manufacturers, they are um, those high hazard installations represented by different companies such as Transnet, Sasol, and many more, wherein we looked into our regulations to check if they have those requirements to prevent the reoccurrence of the likes of incidences that happened in Beirut. So we are in constant collaboration in order to improvise and make sure that we bring harmony on regulating the major hazard installation or the dangerous substances or dangerous good space. In 2022, regulations as well, there's an um, improvement that we've actually made and we have um, uh, included an appointment of a responsible person. So all these installations or major hazard installations need to appoint a responsible person that is going to be a liaising officer between the department, local government, and ensuring that there is full compliance of the regulations on site. And this person should be appointed uh, in writing on full-time capacity. And if it's a much higher um, hazardous establishment, they can actually have deputies However, we have not prescribed competency in terms of qualification, but we deem that measure hazard installation is a profession where there is speciality on chemicals. Obviously, that responsible person has to tick all the boxes and he should be competent to deal or manage that particular measure hazard installation he is appointed for. And some other odd or cases where the department would find that this installation needs much more qualified person. The chief inspector, given the facts, they can make a requirement or instruct that particular measure hazard installation to appoint a person with specified qualifications.